Hello everyone, this is Data from JGX and here we are with another Mac review. Today we will talk about the Marauder 2, Inner Sphere 100 tons. These are the hitboxes. Uh, the side torsos are big but not that big. The problem is that CT is pretty uh, big if you mount a weapon up high like that. So when you see a Marauder 2, you should always shoot the middle because it's easy to to get the CT because it's like it's very tall. Uh, as for these claims here, no hitbox, I don't know if this is true or false, but anyways, it doesn't have any impact or influence because you're not realistically shooting there anyways. If you see a Marauder 2, you're shooting the glass or slightly above the glass. And if you're shooting in the back, you're shooting like in this zone, so it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, as for the agility, the agility is pretty decent for a 100 tonner. It has more agility than the Darwolf, more agility than the Kodiak, more agility than the Annihilator, and it also has pretty thick survival works. Some of them also have a uh, crit chance receiving. I honestly disagree with the fact that one of them doesn't have them and the other ones do have them. I think this is a good mech and lately uh, this mech received a lot of quirks for the sake of quirking. Uh, Basically, I believe that at this point the cauldron is getting trapped into an endless overbuff cycle, but we'll get to this point in a minute. So, for example, these mechs with so many weapon quirks, so many defensive quirks, they don't need also crit chance receiving 25%. Like, why this mech should get crit less or more than other 100 tonners that even have less quirks, worse hard points, it doesn't make any sense. We will start from the hero, the AL. Uh, this one was already very strong. I don't know for what reason it got also three quirks together with the last patch. It doesn't make any sense to me. It got in the last patch 25% velocity, UAC jam duration, and I think uh, range or heat, maybe range, but it doesn't matter. Now it has 25% velocity, 10 range, 10 heat, 10 cooldown. 30% UAC jam duration, 20% UAC jam chance on top of turbo armor, jump jet quirks, I don't know why, and also crit chance receiving. So basically this mech has every possible imaginable quirk for the sake of quirking. In particular, the logic behind jam duration was that when a mech has only one ultra auto cannon and that's it, like a, for example, an adder, with uh, um, with just one ultra auto cannon, it makes sense to put jam duration because what happens is that the downtime, so the time it stays jammed, is reduced. So once it jams, it stays jammed for less. So these kind of quirks would make sense on max with one ultra twenty like the other, or for example, uh, it would make sense on a mech like this, the Assassin 26, that it only has, relies on one ballistic. In fact, I think the Assassin 26 got that. You act jam duration. It makes sense to slap a, such a strong quirk like that. It's very strong because it uh, interferes with the mechanic of the UX. So if you put jam chance, they jam less. If you put jam duration, once they jam, they unjam a lot faster. So it's like a, 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 as if you are getting a guaranteed double tap here. The problem is that this mech doesn't have just one UAC. It actually has a lot of them. And it isn't even as low as the Annihilator that is engine capped, or the Fafnir that is engine capped, or the Darwolf that is engine capped. This one can also go fast. 
why am I doing this? Because uh, it is um, so strong in terms of DPS that you want to boat as many heat sinks as you can possibly can because it shits out so much DPS that it's insane. So look how it performs. So even if you jump, it kind of jumps super fast. The reason I wanted so many heat sinks is that basically I want to be able to fire non-stop in case So in conclusion, if you have this sort of Aeromac, you should fit it this way, you should use it. Don't even try to put PPCs in here because you utilize the heat with these weapons. Maybe you can, you can try to squeeze a light PPC in, but, you know, it doesn't change anything. So, moving to another one, uh, the 4L has a nice PPC goes HSL plus 2 goes cooldown, jump jet quirks honestly these mechs don't pop tart so I for maybe in comp okay in comp you may want to put some jump jets on this in quick play uh, putting jump jets with the purpose of pop tarting on a 100 toner is again like putting perfume on a pig it doesn't change anything because by the time you climb with this gigantic behemoth you get hit anyways when the whole purpose of pop tarting is shooting without getting shot so this mech doesn't benefit that much from jump jets. You can use them in comp just to get on top of a position and shoot from there, but you're not supposed to pop tart with this gigantic behemoth. You're just taking tons away from the ammunition, from the speed, and from the heat sinks. So you want to build it this way. In order to pop tart, you would need to utilize six tons. You don't have six tons out of that build. You either run short of engine, you run short of ammunition, or you run short of heat sinks. jump jets because the jump jets produce heat as well and with the actual NASCAR fast brawl meta that rules in quick play uh, you don't want to lose heat efficiency because you'll just get face pushed and face fucked you need heat efficiency to deal with the current fast light brawl meta that uh, that dominates the quick play these days Moving to another one, uh, we have the laser one. There is a Marauder 2 with laser HSL. Laser duration, laser heat gen, large laser HSL. We already moved the base um, ghost heat limit up. So you can fire four large lasers, no ghost. With HSL plus one, you can shoot five, five heat. Um, so 15 heat 
if you use lasers uh, many people replace these three ones with three medium lasers it's just undergunned if you do this and most people do this uh, it, the mech is weaker you cannot rise the engine so the, the best you can do is go standard engine but again you're only gaining two double heat sinks out of this and uh, the damage per heat of the medium because you can say okay I gained two heat sinks uh, I put a standard engine so it kind of compensates no it doesn't because the damage per heat of an ER medium laser is 5 divided per 4, 1.25. The damage per heat of a large laser is 9 divided 6.5 and is 1.384. So the large lasers have a better damage per heat profile. It means that when you use them, they consume your heat in a more efficient way. So even adding a couple of extra heat sinks here is not making the Mac more heat efficient than the former build because these ones, the ER meds, are wasting your heat compared to the regular large lasers. On top of the fact that you are losing range and you're also losing alpha strike potential. So this is the way to go. And this is how you use it. You reach a corner, then you side peek. And then you hide, because you're actually vomiting fucking eight large lasers. And you peek again. And then you hide. You tank, you hide. You wait a bit. And then you peek again. Heat and so on. Critical. There are other marauders. For example, there is the missile one. Uh, many people do it wrong by putting Artemis. Uh, you don't need Artemis just because by putting Artemis, the missiles become so much larger. You lose slots, you lose weight, you lose a lot of stuff. Uh, when you have so many missiles, um, you gain a lot by having a fast engine because you want to go to brawl and a lot of heat sinks. Because once you are in a brawl, you want to keep firing. I'd say that this one maybe gets buffed in the March patch maybe some more on the SRMs it should get some more it's already good it will become top level mech you need to be fast and then target acquired okay, if the commando reg doesn't rejuvenate the testing run That's why you need the heat sinks. Once you're in a brawl, you want to keep firing. Because, you know, the back is hot. Imagine what happens if you get rid of the heat sinks. And here we are with the next one. Um, Marauder 2-6S. The ballistic range helps uh, together with the ballistic velocity, the AC-20. With the ballistic velocity, you sink better the velocity of the snub noses and the AC-20. Uh, PPC heat, good, because you need that the most when you're trying to brawl with four snub noses and an AC-20. 
and we will see what happens with the rest of the corrects like PPC family HSL and ERPPC HSL. Uh, I suggest to build a brawler this way uh, for Snapson and AC20. It can alpha strike. You see the projectile speed is 900 and the default projectile speed of snub nose is 1200 so by adding velocity on the AC20 they will sink better you could try to do a PPC build like a long-range PPC build and in fact it doesn't tell you that you're ghosting because you are not ghosting the point is that four inner sphere PPCs arm mounted uh, for an inner sphere 100 toner is honestly a bit undergunned so I would not y you can do that it would kind of work but it's pretty shit uh, you can even maybe pair them with a sort of AC5 but that's not the thing I would do this mech I mean there are other sniper mechs that can do good by sniping this one is good with one AC20 and four snap noses Basically, fire them all at once. You see, the projectile velocity kind of matches. Gun matches as well. Speed is pretty cool. We'll fire a cool shot. Keep firing. And when you kind of Overheat, you can keep firing the AC20 with a nice cooldown until you refresh. And then we have the last one. For some, this was the Solaris 1v1 one, and for some weird reasons, it got PPC quirks instead of uh, MPL quirks. Uh, it is done this way, but I think because the guy who in the cauldron who did these quirks had no idea what he was doing, because this was basically the Solaris 6 medium pulse and 2 LB 10 one, and it has LB cooldown, ballistic cooldown, 10 heat, instead of PPC heat gen, like why a regular AC cooldown why just put 20% ballistic cooldown? It's not going to be OP with UX or just put specific LBX cooldown to try to diversify the builds from each other. PPC heat gen, what's the point of PPC gen? Put something related to the build that would let him do good. This Mac used to be good like this. Um... Yeah, like this. And it's still pretty decent, but this one should have had some sort of medium pulse range quirks. Because the medium pulse are just better used by Max who are fast and can get better in range. This one doesn't have speed, so it would have, maybe instead of that PPC heat, it should have had some sort of laser range, or even just medium pulse laser range, or pulse laser range. This is a brawler anyways. So, conclusions. Uh, which ones should you buy? Why? Don't buy the Hero one, because uh, I hope I succeed. I'll try to get it nerfed, if possible, because I am against these cyclic, over continuous over buffs that, in the end, will end up breaking the game. 
because they keep buffing, buffing, and buffing, and they lose track of what stands where, and they just keep spamming quirks everywhere, addressing metas that they don't even understand. So if you have this one, the AL, equip it this way, maybe remove a couple of ammos that you don't need, and, and you can put a light PVC like this, it would work. Then, if you don't have it, one that you, you should definitely buy is the 2 PPC 2 Ghost one. This one is very strong because it also has ECM and it alpha strikes all of this stuff. You should possess this mech. This is very strong. The 8 large laser one is kind of funny. It's not a bad mech, but it's not a must-have like the other one. And then all the brawling ones are kind of good. This one will get better. Uh, but as you saw, uh, these ones are all good mechs. Just saying that the absolute must-have at all costs is the Marauder 4L. The other ones are all good, very good, but just the 4L is, is the must-have. This one, I honestly, if the game stays the way it is, it is a must-have because it's just broken. I just hope it gets nerfed very soon. So that's it for today. We are done. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If it was so, then please subscribe to the channel, share the content with your friends, and I'll catch you guys next time.